There's something inherently fascinating about genre fusions, isn't there? I wonder if the reason is because people want to see if two seemingly polar opposites can somehow make a combination that shakes the core of games as we know it. Or maybe it comes from some sort of sadistic pleasure of observing a game that attempts to mix oil and water. It's a spectrum though, not every single genre fusion belongs squarely in one category or another. The game I'll be talking about today fits in the middle of this phenomenon. It isn't a complete disaster, and it didn't really turn a lot of heads. I played it a few years ago though, and oh shit, I forgot to, I forgot to do the, uh, Did You Play This is the series of videos about games from my past that I seldom see talked about online. Today's game is the debut title from indie developer Tribute. Tribute was started by a bunch of ex-Ubisoft devs who were hot off the heels of releasing the cult classic Scott Pilgrim game. There are also the developers of more recent titles like Panzer Paladin, Mercenary Kings, and an upcoming TMNT game. Something that immediately becomes apparent when looking at Tribute's rap sheet is that when it comes to pixel art, these people know their stuff. These games are nothing if not pretty, and it's no different for their first ever release, Wizard. As mentioned earlier, this game is a fusion of two genres. JRP- don't, don't leave yet. H hang on, hang on. JRPG and Breakout Clone. The main course here is the latter, and can I just mention that despite being one of the oldest genres in the entire industry, we still haven't found a better name for these types of games than Breakout Clones? We don't call first-person shooters Doom Clones anymore, so why should this be any different? So how about this? I propose a new name. Wizorb is a fusion of JRPGs, and paddle likes. Hmm? A majority of the gameplay being taken from paddle likes, whereas everything else is fashioned into the aesthetic of a JRPG. I don't have to. I don't have to explain how paddle likes work, right? We all we all know this. All right, all right, good, good. There are some improvements to the standard formula in Wizorb that I will cover, though. For one, there's a magic meter on display in the corner. Like the name would imply, you play as the old wizard Cyrus, and this dude can sling some spells. The most used spell would probably have to be the fireball. It's as simple as they come. Just left click and watch a projectile fire off directly in front of the paddle. It's far from the most exciting, and in fact this is more of a reskin of the common laser power up seen in other paddle likes. It's cheap to cast and is one of the most practical though. The second spell is done by hitting right click. When the orb is in the air, you can create a gust of wind to influence its direction. The spell is probably the most niche, and its incredibly low magic cost reflects that. It does have its uses however, like when attempting to keep the orb trapped in a problem area for a prolonged amount of time. It's kind of finicky to use correctly though, it influences the wind depending on the last direction the paddle moved in, but mouse aiming can make that easier said than done. Only a slight annoyance though, since like mentioned earlier, it's a cheap spell. These next two spells are a lot more interesting. They're activated by pressing the left and right mouse buttons like the other two spells, but they require the orb to be touching the paddle to activate. This can make it a little tough to pull off since the orb increases in speed with the more surfaces it collides with, but again, it's not that bad. These spells are worth the trouble too. Right click gives the orb fairy wings which allows it to be controlled for a few seconds. This can be a very useful spell when there are a couple of problem blocks left in the level, or when trying to sneak the orb into a troublesome nook and just watch it go to town. The best spell though is easily the fire orb. It turns the orb into a flying nuke, deleting everything but indestructible blocks for a moment. It's incredibly satisfying to activate the fire orb and watch it completely decimate half a level's brick content. With high highs come low lows however. This is the most expensive spell in the game by far. A full magic meter can only accommodate two castings. So it's imperative to be extra sure that casting counts. Nothing hurts more than a fire orb going completely off course and only getting a small handful of bricks out of the ordeal. A huge reason as to why it hurts so much is because there are times where you'll be begging to be over with a level in this game. The easiest and most common criticism that can be levied towards paddle likes are the time it takes to destroy those final few bricks. I wish I could say that Wizorb's magic system remedies this problem, but it doesn't. This mostly becomes an issue once more indestructible blocks are introduced into the game. These blocks hard counter both fire spells, and there's only so much the wind and fairy spells can do to course correct. Wizorb attempts to alleviate this issue using a couple of mechanics, like giving the player a small amount of magic when the orb collides with the paddle enough times without hitting any bricks, 
or paddle upgrades like the Magnet Orb, Long Paddle, and Multi Orb staying with the player until a life is lost, as opposed to when a level is completed. But it's not enough. It's just a fact of life. A lot of time in the later levels is going to be spent just trying to hit the final few bricks. I wouldn't have so much of a problem with this if the game didn't already start to feel like a gauntlet a quarter of the way through. Wizorb's JRPG elements and paddle-like gameplay intersect very little with one another. In the town setting reminiscent of classic 16-bit RPGs, upgrades are bought that affect the paddle, and in the gameplay sections, money is collected to rebuild the town. This town needs to be fully rebuilt to receive the true ending of the game, and it's far from a difficult requirement. I was completely flushed with cash by the end of the game because I had finished the town quest by the halfway mark. I didn't have anything to spend my money on anymore. I certainly didn't need to buy any lives, I was flushed with those too. Once the town is rebuilt, there really isn't any reason to engage with this mechanic anymore outside of reading RPG flavor text. This aspect of the game is shallow to say the least, but it's obviously not meant to be the meat of the game. That comes from the paddle-like sections, and not only do they have the issue I mentioned earlier, but they're also complete gauntlets. Each world requires players to go through 12 levels consecutively. No returning to base halfway and coming back, it's gotta be all at once. Since the levels are fairly breezy in the beginning, this might not appear to be a problem, but it becomes clear very quickly that it is thanks to the game's natural difficulty curve. The further into the game, the longer the worlds take. And when I say difficulty, I don't mean the game gets hard at any point. At least when using a mouse to control the game. With the sensitivity set to 3, by the way. Unfortunately, the game does something worse. It gets boring. I'm not joking when I say that I ended up nodding off a few times while playing some of the later levels of Wizorb. The monotony of trying to get the final few bricks for several levels in a row got to me. Wizorb was a game I remember liking a lot, but the return for this review left me feeling less sure about its quality. The gameplay started to feel like an endurance round. I can understand why this game seems to be mostly forgotten by audiences, and while I wouldn't call it a rousing success, I see a lot of promise in a concept like Wizorb. I think the issue lies in its scope. Wizard was a $4 game originally for Xbox Live, so it was never going to be some RPG epic. But, and pretend to be surprised when I say this, but I think expanding on the RPG mechanics would go a long way in making a game like Wizard work. The levels end up taking far too long, so what if instead of simple level progression, paddle-like challenges were relegated to enemy encounters in a standard RPG dungeon? I think that alone would help to make the pace of the game feel much more even, as well as make the RPG elements more than just set dressing. Different towns to explore and fix, or making the engagement with the starting town more deep could solve the heavy pockets problem. The RPG elements are what sets Wizorb apart from other paddle likes, and it does little to capitalize. This game is almost a decade old at this point, so it seems like its time has passed and people have moved on. But I'd love to see tribute or anyone for that matter, try and expand on what Wizorb attempted to pull off. Maybe whoever does will be surprised to find that Wizorb was closer to greatness than anyone ever realized, and all that was missing from the foundation were the right bricks.